I'm going to kind of do the best I can with this, preparing for this this week, bring me to some lessons of my own as well, and um, kind of bring an answer to some struggles I have with um, attachment theory. Um, I struggled with kind of preparing this, and I just could not understand why. It's a very popular, you know, passage. And um, I went into prayer and fasting about it, and the Lord revealed something to me. And that is the fact that, yes, my dad loves me so much, he believed in me and encouraged me to do a lot. With that comes the responsibility of me not wanting to let him down. So I wanted to do well to please my dad. So what did I have to do with this? <laughs> this is the first time I'm preaching here since Glenn came. And he's a spiritual father, so to say. That's how we see it. So I wanted to do it well so that he will not be disappointed in me. <laughs> so that is why the struggles came. So yeah, attachment theory, <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, we have prayed, and I still pray that the Lord will speak to each and every one of us as we listen to the words. Now, reading this story about this lady is a story we read every time. And for me, sometimes I read through, and it's almost like a novel. I don't really take the time to you know, meditate on what the words the Lord is trying to teach us in these stories are. But this week, I have had to do that with this very passage. When you read and you give the time to meditate on the word, the Lord speaks to you. And it's a personal message sometimes. So don't let anybody tell that, oh, it's the same thing every time. No, the Lord can speak specifically to you. So we read about this lady. She was bent over, crippled with pain. The Bible made us to understand that <clears throat> she had an evil spirit in her that made her crippled, disabled. Just imagine the pain that this woman was you know, under. So I just want to encourage as we go through this passage today, think, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Think of the things that are in your life that have made you crippled. Crippled with pain, with fear, with shame. You see, when we look at shame, guilt, and all those things, we think that's out there. It does not touch me. But the shame we carry, sometimes when things go wrong in our lives, they actually cripple us. It leads to a lot of pain, a lot of illnesses in our lives. So I want to you know, encourage you to, if you have a paper with you, Anything that the Holy Spirit drops in your mind, write it down. Write it down. It is time today as we go through this passage to let go and let God. I've written these notes, but when I bring it out later, it might not be what I have written here that's going to come out to you. So just let the Holy Spirit move and let it flow. Now, when we read through this whole passage, it's, you know, it kind of makes me think. But I just want to tell you a story, a story of a lady that I have known. And as I 
talk through her story, you will understand how that impacts on what this lady went through. Okay, so there was once a little girl. As she was growing up, her parents loved her so much. But because they were busy, they had child minders. They had people to look after the children, to care for everything they need. Now the child would go to preschool. Uncle would go and pick the child up. Mom was not there because she was busy. Dad was busy. He works late. So uncle picks the girl up. Time came and this girl went to school. School age. Children can be very horrible at school, you know. So there were kids that were horrible to her made her feel unloved, unwelcomed. You know, they didn't want to play with her. So she wasn't very happy. Now this same girl, as time goes on, uncle that was picking her up, that she'll be looking after her, did something horrible to her. He hurt her. But told her, oh, it's because I love you sexually abused her. Look at the pain she went through. That of the abuse from the uncle, abuse from the children that's supposed to be her peers that would have loved her and made her life, you know, exciting. So she took all this pain inward. Uncle said, if you tell mom and dad, they wouldn't even believe you. Nobody will believe you. So she believed that and went with the pain, hid everything inside. And as she grew up, she walks around. When you see her walking, she's like, you know, bent over, walking as if, you know, if I look up, people will see me. If I stand straight, they will think, oh, what was she trying to do? Trying to show that she's something. So she walks around with her head bowed in pain. See, the pain is inside. She's working with that pain, and nobody knew. The pain was real. But slowly, this pain began to manifest in her body. She went to the doctor. Said, oh, doctor, I have some sharp pains in my back. Well, can you try and stand up straight? I am standing up straight, but she's bent over. As time goes on, they say, well, we think it's arthritis. It's a severe one, but we can treat it. They gave all the medication they can, but this arthritis wouldn't go away. The pain was there. Can you imagine the pain this girl was going through? She carried that pain from childhood. Now, as an adult, it's there. It won't go away. This girl carried this pain for so long until one day she went to visit a place where they were ministering to people. And, you know, they sat down and talked. And she now realized, well, maybe this pain this is where it's coming from. You see, this lady we hear of in the Bible, they never gave her name because all they knew about her was the lady that was crippled. The pain we have carried through our lives have become so much part of us that we can't even push it away. That was her story. This girl that was abused as a child have grown up and carried that same pain with her. And it has become part of her. But it's causing her pain. She wants to let it go, but don't know how to let it go. How can we help if that girl comes here today stood in, you know, behind the service today, what we will do as a church? How can we minister to her? 
And this lady that I was talking about came to the fellowship where they were ministering. They spoke to her later. That is her faithful day. That was her appointed day. She got relief from her pain. That is what happened to this lady. She came to the church. The church, you know, the synagogue is a church. It's a Jewish church. She came and stood there. She didn't make noise. She didn't say, oh, um, Lida, I, I have this pain. I want you to pray for me. No. She stood there quietly. But the Lord knew her. She knew what she was going through and called her forward. I write down here the power of the word because Jesus spoke to her. Called her forward and spoke to her. Simple words. Woman, thou art free. I wrote that down from um, the, the, um, the Amplified. Put it so nicely that I love it. And I will read it out to you, but if I say I'm going to go through everything bit by bit, it will not come together for me. I have written the next here about her inheritance. This woman, you know, Jesus called her Abraham's daughter. Now, we know about the story of Abraham. He was rich. Okay? Not just financially, spiritually, and God loved him so much, blessed him a lot. So she is Abraham's daughter. Do you think she knew that? Do you think that made sense to her when she was going through all this pain, the pain that have made her bent over? Do you think that made sense to her? It didn't. So how many times have you looked at your life and think, you know, yeah, you say God loves me, so why am I suffering? How many times have you looked at your situation and asked yourself, Mm. You say God is real. Yeah, I hear you. You say, you know, he'll provide all my needs. Okay, get that. So, where is he? Maybe that's where this woman was. She didn't, you know, stand up tall to say, yeah, I'm Abraham's daughter. I have everything I need. God is on my side. And he can lead me through everything I'm going through. She did not see that. She did not hold on to that. But Christ reminded her and everybody else that was there on that day about this. This is Abraham's daughter. How dare you say I cannot heal her? Now, I don't know about you. I've been in churches where if a miracle happened in a church, the pastor is happy. Am I lying? They're happy because, you know, the next thing, everybody wants to come to your church to get their own healing. But what did he do? He wasn't happy. Instead, you know, he was a voice of opposition. Because the synagogue leader was angry, indignant, because Jesus healed on the Sabbath day said to the people, there are six days. Six days that she can be healed. Why don't she come on and be healed on that day? You know, in one of those days. Why today? So if we, when we get you know, hooked up on how things are done, it becomes a problem. As Christians, we are encouraged through the Bible in 1 Corinthians that if one member suffers, all the rest, you know, we share in that suffering. We all suffer. It says, you know, let me read it out properly. 1 Corinthians 12, 26. If one member suffers, all the parts share the suffering. 
If one member is honored, all the members share in the enjoyment of it. As Christians, we are, you know, a bridge. A bridge in this world. So if somebody is suffering outside and comes in here, our duty is to show them the way, the love of Christ. So we are build bridges. We build bridges. We are salt of this earth. You know, salts, we, 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 are, we are there to change situations, to make them see the beauty of God's love for them. So I'm saying this, now I'm thinking, you know, something comes to my mind. If somebody comes in here today and is very dirty, will you reach out and say hello? Show them God's love? Will you do that? Or will you be like the synagogue leader and say, you know, you're too dirty, go home and wash before I will say hello to you. I worked with homeless people in London for a while and I tell you, they don't smell very nice. But the Lord showed me to love them just like he loved me. It was hard to start hugging them especially when they have gone through a lot but we as human beings we as Christians wherever God have placed you have led you to you are there as a change agent you are the salt of the earth the Bible has taught us question I have put, uh, my question is you know the synagogue leader, he was angry so I sat there reading it and I'm thinking if this was his own child if this was him that was sick would he have said, you know go home and come back later do you think so do you think he would have said, you know, yeah Jesus, don't heal her today. I uh, will bring her on Monday. Let's say it's like church as we do it today. I'll bring her on Monday, on Tuesday. Let her continue in the pain. I'll bring her then for the healing. No. So that's hypocrisy. You will not let your child, I am a mother, you will not let your child be in pain and not look for solution to that pain. So the hypocrisy of this man hit me. And Jesus pointed that out to them in verse 15. He said, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you untie your, you know, your work ox, your work animal? So they treated, they will treat an animal better than they would another human being. That's not right, is it? So how is there any time we have taken more care of animals than human beings? My daughter was saying to me this week, he said, well, there's a part of the world now that they feed the, the, the cows instead of feeding human beings I said for what he said well they want to fatten them up I said that's not right he said well tell them I can't tell them she's reading wherever she's reading but that is just look at the, the, the look at, putting those two things together a human life and an animal you'll be prepared to go and untie an animal on a Sunday, but say, don't look after a human being. It doesn't work. It does not give a good example. When Jesus spoke to them, I think at the end of the day, they came to their senses. They were happy at the end. 
Because when Jesus said this, all of those who were criticizing, who did not want this woman to get her healing, they changed their mind. Then we are filled with shame. Not the woman now. The story changed. You see, whatever we are going through in life, there's always a time, an appointed time for change. This woman got her time and she got change. So whatever has caused you pain and shame in your life or is still causing you pain and shame today, just want to encourage you that shame when I was looking through shame when I was doing some essays, it says shame says this is who you are. But I want to encourage you, that is not who you are. Wherever you have come from, whatever pain that has been dealt to you in your life, it's not who you are. You are Abraham's child. You are a child of God. You were bought with a price. You see, Christ built that bridge. He bought you, took you from where you have done wrong and you know, built a bridge that brings you back into a relationship with God. So wherever you have gone, you think you have done wrong. Wherever you think, oh, I went to a disco when I was little. I shouldn't have been there. And you think, oh, I'm ashamed of myself. It's time to step out. You see, sometimes some people say, okay, oh, my uncle did this to me. My mother was horrible to me. My father did not look after me. I did not have a family growing up. Nobody loved me. Today you are in a family, a different family, Christ family. You have brothers and sisters. When one part of us suffer, we all suffer. If I see you lying down on the street today and I can't step back to say, oh, my brother or my sister is suffering, then I am not who I should be to you, a brother, a sister. when, when uh, the story of Cain and Abel, when he was asked, when Cain was asked, where is your brother? What did he say? Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord have reminded me time and, and time again that I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. So please set your mind today. Are you willing to be your brother's keeper? Ephesians 4.32 encourages us to become useful and helpful and kind to one another. Tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, loving-hearted, forgiving one another. As God in Christ forgave us. So my other question there today is, have you been hurt in your life? Have somebody done something, said something that was annoying and very hurtful? Do you think you can forgive them? Now think about it, even if it was done in this house here today. Do you think we can become useful and become forgiving, relieve that burden you're carrying? All it's doing is giving you a hunch back, causing you pain. Arthritis come with different, you know, different reasons. I was told, you know, almost 14 years ago that I had an onslaught of arthritis. 
when you have unforgiveness, when we have, you know, things that we cannot let go of, it actually caused us a lot of pain. But today, yes, they told me 14 years ago that I have that. I don't have it. And that's the grace of God. Because I have learning. I'm still learning. So whatever the Lord spoke to me about this passage today, it's not just for you, it's for me too. Letting go and letting God takes away the pain that pull us down. The apostle, the apostle Paul encourages us further in Colossians 3.15 to let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule, act as umpire continually in our hearts. Deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in our minds in that peaceful state to wish as members of Christ one body you were also called to live and be thankful giving praise to God when this lady was healed what did she do? She thanked the Lord. And this morning, I want to encourage you. Seriously. I said earlier at the beginning, if you have anything that the Lord drops in your heart today, write it down. Bring it to the cross. Drop it there. And go home without it. Let go and let God. It is time for us to be free. A few weeks ago, Glenn preached and said, you know, about freedom from the pains, things that have held us from before. The Lord is still on the same theme. Whatever has held you down that have caused you pain, it is time to let it go. There's, a, there's power in putting something down and bringing it out. Write it down. Bring it to the cross. And let us just pray over those things. Pray with you and let God take control of everything. This morning when I was just still meditating, a song dropped in my heart and I just could not get the remaining bit of it. And I felt it was an encouragement for today. Maybe for somebody. And when I came in here, I was telling Glenn, I said, I can't remember a song that I was remembering, you know. Um, when I was growing up, we sing it um, in scripture, un scripture Union. And it says, my f the Father knows. It says, um, He knows how hard the fight has been. The endless striving day by day. The soul that weep, the soul that prays, the Father knows, the Father knows. Whatever it is, the Lord knows. So it is time to bring it to him. 